You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the word. Already in the Old Testament, the Lord reveals himself as a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. These are the main qualities of the God of love, who will be revealed fully by his incarnate word, Jesus Christ. The first reading. A proclamation from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai as the Lord has commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood up with him there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before Moses and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, to come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our wickedness and sins and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In his conclusion of his second letter to the Corinthians, St. Paul mentions each of the Blessed Trinity. Along with them, he lists also the corresponding divine realities of love, grace, and fellowship, with, we, with which we usually associate with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The second reading. 
a proclamation from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice, mend your ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the proclamation Thanks of the Holy Gospel. Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good evening to all of you, mga kafists SM Aura. Good evening to all of you who are watching this online mass and who will be joining us in the worship and the talks later after this mass it is really a joyful celebration because today we are celebrating the solemnity of the most holy trinity ang dakilang kapistahan ng banal na santatlo o yung tatlong persona sa iisang dios no. would like really to thank the lord for giving us this opportunity this is our first Sunday in the general community quarantine level. That's why many people are excited no, to join. And uh, many people are in some areas of the country, they are already attending mass uh, masses no, in uh, the churches with limited number following you know, strict uh, preventive measures as mandated by the government. And you will still follow that. That's why we are promulgating the Word of God through this online Mass, Worship, and Talk. Okay. So please join us. Ha? Yung mga, yung mga nagmimisa ngayon, okay? wag lang hanggang misa. Dapat hanggang worship and then you have talks. They have good talks, you know, after this. You know, I remember the Trinity is one subject in theology. You know? For those who have taken theology, this is one subject. We uh, we struggle, we wrestle, understanding the Trinity 
uh, for for months and maybe for years even no in uh, the masters we still uh, understand maybe the trinity but i'd like to confess to you something i passed my subject trinity i think i got 1.0 no, no. Yeah, no. but to be honest with you i cannot still fathom and understand the mystery of the trinity if you will ask me father can you explain to us the holy trinity the father the son and the holy spirit i would answer you in this way i would answer you not coming from what i understand but coming from what i have experienced that's why let us try to go to the identity of god as the trinity by understanding the love of the trinity and we can only understand the heart of the trinity by understanding the works of love of the trinity as may be behind that in your ang galaw na pag-ibig ng banal na Santa Claus. You know, when I entered the seminary, my parents don't like me to enter. Why? Because I'm already working. I have my own job. I have my own life. I can go whatever I like to go. They are my primary detractors. They don't like me to enter the seminary. But still, I entered the seminary. I remember that was June. Gani tong buwan? Siguro I would say na na yun na anniversary ko of entering the seminary. I I remember it is same the same day. It's June six that I entered the seminary. A few months after, that was September. My mother had a very severe heart attack. She was rushed to the hospital, and she was really in critical condition. May may very cry. My father and in. Really, now we pray. We pray really. Be with our family. So the doctor said, "I went to the hospital to take." Still, you know, we are praying God. We take care of my mother and we take care until now. My mother, my mother stayed eating all the things. Okay. Where am I going? Think from our family experience, from my own experience. During these times, during those times, during the times of difficulty, even though we are undeserving of that guidance and grace, God was there, and maybe. And yet, if you try to look at that beautiful experience of God's guidance and God's love for us, it is always abounding. Uma apaw ang pag-ibig ng Dios. And my mother now and the whole family is there in their in their in their old age already. 
My mother is more than 90, nine, more than 90 years old. My father is on, on his late 80s, but still abiding. The shower of God's love is real until now. And I would say that is the experience of the Holy Trinity. I cannot fathom or understand the Holy Trinity as it is. But what I can say that the Father has shown his love for us through the Son, and that is sustained by the Holy Spirit. That's why every time we make the sign of the cross, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we remember the God whom we are following. And who is that? He is the God of love and of peace. That is expressed in the second reading of today. St. Paul is telling us that our God is the God of love and of peace. And you can say really that God is the God of love and of peace. Because St. Paul explicitly proclaimed that God is the God of love and explicitly related it to the Trinity. Remember the greeting that the priest usually say at the beginning of the Mass, he says this, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Remember that. The communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sino sabi yan sa umpisa ng misa? And maybe you can tell me now, and with your spirit. But St. Paul, doon nang galing in the, in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, the greeting of the priest. And St. Paul was the one who said that. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship or the communion of the Holy Spirit. He proclaimed that love explicitly in the Trinity. First, the love of the Father. The love of the Father who is the source of all love. The love of the Father, who get out of his way to bring us closer to him. Because he is the God of history. He is the God who hears the cry of his people. The God who saw the suffering of his people. The God who at this of Egypt, who can only be loved for him to do all the things he is doing until right now. He is our God, the God who is the source of that love, and the God who emanates love, and who could only give love. He is slow to anger, but rich in compassion rich in mercy. And why is he slow to anger and rich in mercy? Because he is the God of love. Diba? And sinasabi sa ating first dream. He did everything, he, he did everything, everything for his people because of his love. Even though they are undeserving, and yet he did it out of his great love. That is the love of the Father. And because the Father loves his people so much, the Father loves us so much, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, is manifested. How? The love of the Father is manifested in a lavish way, forgiving us his only begotten son. Lavish way. He gave us Jesus Christ, even though we are undeserving to receive him. Look at that. We can understand the relationship of the Father and the Son because of their works of love. Together, they work to manifest their love for us. Magkasama silang pinapakita sa atin ang pag-ibig nila 
para sa atin. Na kung hindi magmamaliw, hindi magbabago at magpakailanman. And the love of the Father is revealed. The graciousness of the of the Son is there. And how that love of the Father and the Son must be sustained, putting us together by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is expressed now in His action of uniting people together. The love that is expressed in communion. And I think, and I believe, that feast aura or any other community placed together, gathered by the Holy Spirit, we are gathered by the love of God in our life. We cannot be in a community if we have we have not felt that God loves us. We cannot sing beautiful songs and worship later on if we have not felt through Jesus Christ the love of God in our life. The children who are reading the first reading, the second reading, and though the, our commentator today, they will not express the word of God that way if they have not felt through Jesus Christ, through the parents, through the family, the love of the Father. We will not be like this, burdening to serve other people and to serve, uh, to serve those who are in need if we have not felt in our life the love of God expressed and manifested in Jesus Christ being sustained by the Holy Spirit. Our preachers cannot proclaim God's word so lavishly, so generous, if they have not felt the love of God in their life. I myself cannot serve the sick. And love those who are unloved by the society. If I have not felt the guidance of God in my life. And I have seen that through my parents. Through my family. And through you. As long as there are people like you. Who is shining brightly with God's love, that love becomes infectious. It becomes a pandemic that places people together in communion because we have felt the love of God in our life. Yung pag-ibig na yon nag-uumapaw, yung pag-ibig na yon nagluluningning, yung pag-ibig na yon kailangan sabihin sa iba, yung pag-ibig na yun, kailangan madama ng iba. At yung pag-ibig na yun, kahit magkakaiba tayo, tayo ay nagkakaisa. Why? Because of the Father, through the Son, united by the Holy Spirit. That is how we can understand the Holy Trinity. That is how we experience the works of love of our God, who is love, expressed in three persons in that God. This is a good day for all of us, my dear friends, to reminisce those beautiful works of love of God in our life because God has given us His only begotten Son to reveal to us how much He loves us. Reminisce that beautiful experience with God. Do not sleep the night without reminiscing and remembering how God manifested His love to you. In a very simple way, but in that simple way, you begin, you begin to have faith and you begin also to love your brothers and sisters. I love you. I hope that love remains in us all because the love that we are expressing is 
the love that we have received from the Father. Amen. Let us all stand and let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Having received from the Blessed Trinity, the gifts of life and faith and love. Let us approach the throne of glory, pleading for the needs of all humankind. Let our response be, O Most Holy Trinity, hear us. O Most Holy Trinity, hear us. For the entire Catholic Church, God's family on earth, May she proclaim with her teaching and make present with her initiatives the love of the Blessed Trinity for all human beings. Let us pray. O Most Holy Trinity, hear us. For the Holy Father, our Bishop, and our parish priest, may they be constantly strengthened in the fulfillment of their pastoral duty and see the fruits of their dedication. Let us pray. O Most Holy Trinity, hear us. For all the members of the different Christian denominations, may their common faith in the Blessed Trinity bring them to live in unity, cooperation, and peace. Let us pray. O Most Holy Trinity, hear us. For all families in, a par in our parish, may the harmony and love that bind together the three divine persons be reflected the mutual rel relationships of all the members of each family. Let us pray. O Most Holy Trinity, hear us. For ourselves and all the people dear to us, may we always be aware of the presence of the Blessed Trinity in our midst and derive from it joy, courage, and inspiration. Let us pray. O Most Holy Trinity, hear us. Let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray. O Most Holy Most Trinity, Trinity, hear us. Hear us. Eternal Triune God, you created us in your image and gave us new life in the sacrament of baptism. Fill our lives with your presence and welcome us into your own kingdom where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have the offering of the bread and wine, symbols of the fruit of our hard-earned labor of the week.
please join in singing of the offertory songs. Please stand. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and adored what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. And for this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice, they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into this passion, he took bread and gave him thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you the life in the chalice of salvation and the to be here to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints of peace you throughout the ages, we may make co heirs to eternal life and through him and with and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. You know, all of us has received God's love. Love never ends. Love always unites us. Love will always win. And for that, the gift of love of God also to the Father in together we say
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. This cross to set peace with you, my peace, look not on sin, but and good unity in accordance with your will, who live in love and ever. Peace, Lord, be with all. Offer to one another the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of, of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like Let to thank pray. all of you. Come Let on. us pray the Oracho Imperata against the coronavirus disease 2019. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the, the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant etern eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Colongsod, pray for us. May we request Father Dan for a special blessing to those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries for the month of June. May I invite all those who are celebrating their birthdays this month of June and wedding anniversaries, uh, please stand up and then bow your heads. For those who are celebrating their wedding anniversaries, please hold the hands. Okay. <laughs> bow your heads and let's pray for God's blessing. Bestow peace, O Lord, we pray, on your feet for who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries this month of June. May your heavenly favor increase in number to those people subject to you and make them always obedient to your commands. Fill them with your love. Guide them with your Holy Spirit. Make their faith strong and steadfast as they continue to follow your will throughout their lives. Strengthened by your blessing, they may at all times abound in thanksgiving and bless you with an ending exaltation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us all thank Father Dan Cancino for celebrating the Holy Mass with us. Uh, I'd like also to thank our the youth and the children who serve in this Mass. You are so inspiring and edifying. Palakpakan po natin silang lahat. Okay. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga kabataan. No? I hope to see you once again uh, because we have received the Word of God and the love of God. We keep on serving also other people by proclaiming His love and His Word. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Purify your faithful both in body and in mind, O Lord, we pray, so that feeling the compunction you inspire, they may be able to avoid harmful pleasures and ever feed upon your delights. Through Christ our Lord. 
Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go, my dear friends, and let us spread the love of the Lord. Thanks be to God. uncertain and life is changing right before our eyes but you know one thing that doesn't change it's that our God is the same God yesterday today and tomorrow and you know he saved us trial after trial we've seen his faithfulness at work again and again and again and so this isn't different and we rest on that we rest on his faithfulness and we know that he is a promise keeper and so we come into His presence in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, let's worship. You are with me. What can separate us? You are for me. What can stand against us? Your love, it won't let go. I know it won't. Darkness, shadows, have no power over me. Fear is empty, shame has no authority. Your love, it won't let it go. I know it won't. I know your thoughts, your plans for me are good. I know you hope. My future and my home. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Come on, reset. Healing, freedom. As you speak favor over me. Faith is breaking all the possibility. Your name has overcome. Your name alone. For I know your thoughts, your plans for me are good. I know you hold my future and my home. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. Your promises never fail. On hands up. You declare, Oh, I am 
standing on every promise that you made. I will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. Jesus, I will trust every word I hear you say. I will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. Sing, I am standing on every promise that you make. I will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. Jesus, I will trust every word I hear you say. I will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. God's promises never fail. And unto the name Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Good evening, brothers and sisters. Welcome to our feast online. I'd like to say hi to those who are tuned in right now. All of you who uh, are making this uh, feast SM or a Saturdays a habit. Thank you, Father Dan, for saying Mass for us again. And we all are truly blessed. And happy Trinity Sunday. Tomorrow, That's going to be tomorrow, and that's what we're celebrating now. Welcome, welcome, welcome. As always, I'm going to ask you to make some noise in the chat box. If you're here, please make your presence felt. Please uh, shout out, whatever it is, whatever it is. Just, just greet one another. Good evening. Hi, hello, how are you? And... Um, yeah, I want you to be active because people will be engaging you in the chat box and uh, I want this to be interactive, okay? It's bad enough that we're not together, okay? But no distance and no pandemic, no COVID virus can stop us from coming together in the name of Jesus and that's why we're all here. So it's bad enough that we're not together. I want you and I need you to make some noise, okay, so that we can make it as interactive as possible. All right, so we're going to continue our series on the best preaching ever, discovering our path to heaven, lessons and inspirations from the book of Matthew and talk, talk seven. Today, we're going to talk about the antidote. What is the antidote? Last week, we talked about killing the virus, killing the virus, and today, we have the antidote and we will dive into deeper into God's word and deeper into the stock after we pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. Can I invite you to say this prayer with me? Let's declare God's abundance over our lives together. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. 
Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim, say it, that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We have been talking about um, the gospel according to Matthew. We have been studying that, and I just want to bring you, um, bring you, and try to help you remember what we have taken up so far. So we're still in the gospel according to Matthew, and uh, we went to uh, discuss the the Sermon on the Mount, and here Jesus peeled away the outer wrapping of six specific laws to expose God's heart. I, wa I want to remind everyone that during their time, the Old Testament, they had 613 laws. And you had to be faithful to every single one of them. Yeah, but that, that's a law. And uh, I, as I, I've been hearing this uh, um, often these days. The law is difficult, but it is the law. So the, during that time, 613 laws. But Jesus started to peel away the outer wrapping of spe six specific laws so that we will get a better glimpse of God's heart, okay? Jesus started to talk about these six areas, and he talked about murder, adultery, divorce, oaths, making oaths, revenge, and he hating your enemies. If you notice this six, this six, if you talk about these six, these point to the importance of relationships. These point to our relationship with other people, with the world, with the world around us, with our neighbor, okay? So, um, <clears throat> now we realize and we see that God has a bias for relationships that, that, that and this is our one big message for today, that God values our families, God values our relationships and uh, it, God will use your family to bless you. God will bless your families and then use your families to bless you. Use your families to bless the world. So God values our families, all right? Can I, can I ask you now to just type in, um, type in these words and if there's someone beside you, can you just say, I treasure you more than anything else. I think we need to tell that to our family members. We need to tell that to our friends. And uh, we need to tell that and to remind ourselves also that relationships are important. So I treasure you more than anything else. I treasure you more than anything else. At the end of the day, everything will go. Uh, of course, faith, hope, and love, and uh, the greatest of which is love, of the three is love. But at the end of the day, it's your relationships that will determine the quality of your life, right? So if you agree with me, type in agree, 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 all right? God values your relationships. Agree, agree, agree. Can I invite you now to extend your hand towards the word of God? And let's just honor the word together. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We're going to read from Matthew chapter 7, verse 31 to 32. And today, uh, last week or the previous weeks, we talked about murder, adultery. Last week, we talked about sex. Today, we're going to talk about divorce. Um, Jan and the builders, together with the builders, myself, we were we were meeting, and uh, Jan was talking about the topic uh, for tonight, and uh, he said the message is really simple. Sabi ni God, ay yun divorce, <laughs> period. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna read that Matthew seven thirty one thirty two. You have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, 
causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman also commits adultery. So this is what God has in his heart against this thing that we call divorce. Okay? We'll dive that into that in a little while. Can you extend your hands towards the word one more time? And let's honor the word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There has to be a more creative way of singing that or maybe doing it in, 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 in you know, as a tenor opera. Thy word. <laughs> but uh, we'll get to that eventually. We'll get to that soon. All right? So, Again, our one big message is God loves your family. Can you type that? I love my family. I love my family. And I need you to do that because I will not continue if you don't. Just type in there. I love my family. I love my family. If you love your family, then go. Go, go, go. Type it in. Type away, type away. I love my family. Come on. All right. Wow, grab it. The response is overwhelming. Okay, thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> because you're the first one. Okay, because you're the first one. And you know what, Lindsay? I want you to keep in. Let's keep in touch because of what, uh, because of what you did. Because you were the first one to do that. I'm gonna give you a free ebook. Ah, uh, pag-usapan na lang natin. I want you to connect with anyone who's engaging you there. We will get your details, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make you choose about what ebook you will want, so that we can give that to you for free. Okay, so you know, just just follow and just type it in, and you know, there are blessings for that. Okay, God loves your family. God loves your family. Now we've heard that the family is the basic unit of society. And um, we know and we believe and we've seen this happen, that if the family is being targeted, if the family is, um, is, is wasting away, we can see that the fiber of our society also is, gets wasted. Edward Gibbons, Chris, Christopher Dawson, and Carl Zimmerman, they have asked this question, why do entire civilizations fall? Why do entire civilizations fall? And the, the, the conclusion is simple. Failure of society is equal to the failure of family life. If you see a failure in the family lives of people, the failure of the society will not be far behind. So we need to strengthen our families and our families are being threatened our, our families are under attack. And brothers and sisters, that's what we're teaching here at the feast. We need to value that and we need to fight. We need to take our stand. We need to, to uh, put our foot down, our feet down. And we need to say, no, I will fight for my family. No, I will not allow you. The devil, not today. Not today. All right? So again, the failure of the family life is equal to the failure of a society. Let me bring you back to the Roman um, era. During that time, the strongest, um, the strongest government in the world was Rome. And uh, it's funny because there's this guy, okay, there's this guy named Seneca, okay? There's this guy named Seneca, and he was predicting the downfall of Rome. And at that time, people were laughing at him because Rome was very, very, very powerful at that time. So, so but he was already saying that uh, uh, they will, they will um, fail. Rome will fall. And uh, Seneca said that, uh, why? Why was he able to say that? Why? Because he's saying that the family is under attack. He said, marriages are under attack. And he said that they divorce in order to remarry, and then they marry in order to divorce. Sounds familiar? I think that it's easier nowadays to get a divorce than it was 
maybe 20, 30 years ago. Maybe during the time of our parents, it was a no-no. And, um, and this tells us that the, 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 conscience, the conscience of society is slowly, be, is slowly being desensitized so that what used to be taboo, what used to be um, um, a rare occurrence, okay? I'm not saying that there were no problems before, but what used to be a rare occurrence is now uh, happening left and right. So again, we talk, we're talking about divorce. Um, in America, in America, okay, um, a study was made. And um, in America today, 50% of marriages end up in divorce. And uh, so when they divorce, they remarry. So 60% of the second marriages, <laughs> the second marriages end up in divorce. And they remarry again. And 73% of third marriages end up in divorce. So you see the conscience is being desensitized. And once you do it, once you go through it, okay? And I'm not, I'm not blaming or, and I'm not looking down and I'm not condemning people who are in the situation. What I'm saying is that that is the natural um, turn of events that when you go through that, okay, um, you, you kind of get desensitized and it's easier to do it again, okay? Then here, what are, we, what are we learning here? That many times the problem is not the other person, but the problem is the inner person. I say that again. Many times the problem is not the other person. The problem is the inner person. Because if you're wounded, if you're not whole, if you're struggling, if you're sick inside, you carry that into the marriage. You carry that into the marriage. That's why we tell people, we tell single people, you have to be whole as a single person because marriage will not make you complete. What will happen is that you will just magnify the state that you were in as a single person and bring it into the marriage and eventually you will have problems. So it's important for us to look at the inner man, the inner self. Okay, look at the inner self and, and try to find out what we really need. Just in this, just as, uh, you know, we're in this uh, pandemic and we're, we're battling the COVID-19 virus, um, the, the, best, the best offense is, and the best defense is an, a strong immune system. So let's look at the inner man because that's where the problem usually starts. And that, the, 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 the figures I gave you happens is happening in America, but even in the Philippines, we're not far behind. Um, uh, in the, the past, in the recent years, there have been a 30% decline of marriages in the Philippines. More and more people are believing that they, they don't want to get married and they, that they just want to live in. They just, they, they, they want to have the, the, the relationship without the commitment. And uh, um, so there's a 30% decline of marriages in the Philippines. And uh, that's a problem because um, when that happens, live in, you, you, you live together, the chances of cohabitating couples, okay, living in couples, separating, rise, it rises by 500%. Again, sometimes it may work, okay, but I'm talking about the general, uh, the general occurrence of this thing that we call divorce and separation, okay? Now, going back to, to uh, the, the studies by the, the, the question asked by the three philosophers, um, how does the defense civilization die? My question is, how does the family life affect the nation? How does your family life affect the nation? In three ways, three ways, okay? Number one, it affects the nation and you see that there's a problem in this area because of this problem. And uh, it, it manifests itself in this problem that we have. So a problem gives birth to another problem. Okay, Number one, poverty. Poverty. Um, in America, again, because there's no study yet in the Philippines, 5% of married how family households are poor. 5%? of married family households are poor. 
full and, and complete families, father, mother, you know, 5% of married family households are poor, but, but 30% of single parent households are poor. 30% of single parent households are poor. When, when, when the family is not complete, when it's a broken family, the chances of that family going through problems, money problems, is bigger. Okay? So, so poverty, it affects the society because poverty is a manifestation of a problem for families. Okay? Number two, crime. Crime. Studies show that the most important predictor of criminal behavior is the father's absence in a person's life. 80 plus percent of offenders, if you study their background, if you look deeper into their family life, they don't have father figures. They don't have father, father figures. And that is, that is really, really sad. Um, I heard of one school and... Uh, you know, the 400 students. And they, they said that the, the guidance counselor was telling me that all, can I say it again? All students come from broken families. All 400 of the students come from broken families. And you know what? And, and then this guidance counselor was telling me 100% of people or problem students come from broken families and they don't have a father's father figure in their life. So poverty is a problem, crime is a problem. And um, number, number three, it's government spending. <laughs> it becomes a problem because strong families provide for childcare, healthcare, pension, elderly care, because they're 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 strong and they, they get to talk about this, they get to plan about tomorrow. Because if you fail to plan, no one plans to fail, but sometimes we fail to plan, and sometimes we, we, we can't work out our plan because we don't have a plan. But uh, so strong families do that for the family, but because because the families are broken, especially now during this COVID nineteen, you hear a lot of. Uh, um, Single parents saying that I need help, I need help. When's the government going to help me? When's the government going to help me? And uh, that is that becomes a problem. Government spending. Okay. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to realize that the real wealth of a nation is, is its strong families. The real wealth of a nation is its strong families. Are you wondering? I, I still believe that in the Philippines we have more. We still have strong families, and I'd like to I'd like to uh, uh, just just stress that point that in the Philippines we have stronger families than other countries. And uh, are you wondering why the Filipino is resilient? Are you wondering why the Filipino bounces back fast in spite of the pandemic? We're smiling, and uh, a lot of people I heard from the news that um, about seven. Seven million plus have lost their jobs, but but I know that we will bounce back because that's us. Because we still believe that family life and a strong family is a real wealth of the nation. Okay. Now, now, what is the antidote? What is the antidote? It's simple. Loving families. It's, it's, it's the soothing balm that God is using to heal us. Loving families are God's antidotes to almost every problem in the world. If you study God's word and you try, if you try to look for a pattern, you will see that God's way of healing, God's antidote to every, almost every problem in the world is love. Love coming from family. And, and can I just say that God loves your family? God loves your family and he, he cares for your family and he is concerned about your family. So you need to understand that because that's God's way. That's what God will use to heal you. I have, I have friends who, who've left family 
and uh, to, to, to pursue greener pastures, to, to, to pursue their dreams, and uh, eventually they fail and uh, they, they, they encounter problems. But what, do, what happens? They eventually go home. They go home to dad. They go home to mom. God will use your family to heal you. God will use your loving family. If you're just starting a family, let's strive to have loving families because our kids will need that. Because that's how God will heal every wounded person in the world. Whether their own families or other families, but love is the answer. Amen? Amen? God loves your family. Now, let's, let's go back to the time of Jesus. What was happening in the time of Jesus? Why did Jesus say these words? Why did he talk about divorce? Okay, um, let's read again 7, 31, 32 of Matthew. You have heard the law that says a man can divorce his wife by merely giving her a written notice of divorce. Don't you find it very easy to divorce? That if I, if, if I just then like this morning, if I didn't like what my, my wife wore, uh, or, or I noticed that my wife uh, grew from a medium to a triple X, extra large, um, you know, I can just write her a note. Notice and, and, and say, I'm divorcing you. Um, let's continue. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, causes her to commit adultery. And anyone who remarries, who marries a divorced woman, also commits adultery. Um, it, 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 if, if you're going to base all your, if, you, if you're going to read the verses that we just read, um, you, you, you will conclude that, yeah, was Jesus saying that it's, uh, that, but you, you somehow will need clarity when it comes to this because um, Jesus seems to be saying one thing and another thing. But uh, he's saying that uh, you have heard the law, but this is the law. You've heard the law, but this is the law. Um, um, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1 to 2, this is same um, in, in re reference to the same topic. Um, it reads, suppose a man marries a woman, but she does not please him. Having discovered something wrong with her, he writes a document of divorce, hands it to her, and sends her away from his house. When she leaves his house, she is free to marry another man. God, through the prophets of the Old Testament and the writers of the New Testament, um, it's, 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 you, you just have a glimpse of God's heart here that God is saying, I don't like divorce. It's, it's, God is against it. God is um, totally against it. In, in Malachi chapter 2, verse 16, it says, For I hate divorce. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty. You know, God is saying, I hate divorce. Um, but but where, where is this coming from? Where, where, where is this um, confusion coming from? Um, there... The, there are two rabbis, esteemed rabbis during that time, um, Hillel and Shammai, okay? Shammai and Hillel, and they, 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 they come from, uh, they, they have two schools of thought regarding divorce, okay? In, in, in the parallelism, I'll read to you in Mark chapter 10 and then in Luke, okay? Mark 10, 11 says, whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery against her. So, okay, so divorce and remarry and then adultery was in the picture. And in Luke, it says, for example, a man who divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery. Okay, so um, the, the schools of thought, the two schools of thought, Shammai, okay, parang Shammai, um, believes that uh, the only reason where, the only reason for you to divorce is adultery. That's it. That's it, um, but 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 Hillel, uh, Hillel is saying no. It's not just the reason. Okay, 
um, in Matthew 7, again, 31, 32. But I say that a man who divorces his wife, unless she has been unfaithful, okay, causes her to commit adultery, okay, unless she has been unfaithful. Let me, uh, let, let me try to explain further, okay? Just stay, just stay with me, okay? This is a little technical, okay? Um, in, in, in reference to uh, the, the, the word um, divorce, adultery, um, it's, it's, uh, if you, the, the Greek term used for that is porneia. Porneia, okay? Adultery, the, the idea of adultery in the translation used, the Greek word is porneia. What is porneia? It is adultery before consummation. Okay? Talaga namang kapag may problema ako sa asawa mo, talaga ang consummation niya. <laughs> joke. Joke. I want you to type ha, 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 ha. Okay? Type ha, 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 ha. Okay? It's adultery before consummation. Uh, again, I'll explain. Um, during that time... You know, I, I got married 11 years ago. And uh, after the wedding, right after the wedding, um, we, we uh, had our honeymoon. And that's fine, you know. Uh, just in the, the middle of the reception, you know, I was really itching. And I really wanted to go already. And, and you, know, you know, yeah. And uh, so that's, that's how we celebrate. And that's how we... We do marriages now, but but during their time, um, uh, let's say get married today, the consummation of the relationship happens a, a year after, okay? So merong pause, okay? So when you talk about pornea, when you talk about that, adultery before consummation is that before the marriage is consummated, there is unfaithfulness, there is infidelity. And there is adultery in between that. So, so um, that was that was what was referred to in the verses that we read. Um, Jesus was really revealing God's heartbeat for marriage. Jesus was really saying that this is how it should be. Okay, so uh, uh, Jesus is not siding with Shammai or Hillel. Jesus is saying that this is how God sees it and this is how it should be so god loves your family god loves your marriage and you need to fight for your marriage i'm going to share with you three three ways so that you can fight for your marriage fight for your marriage if you're listening to me and your marriage is on the rocks fight for your marriage god has a plan for you and god's plan is for you is for you to have a good marriage, okay? Fight for your marriage in three ways. Number one, work on your character. Sometimes marriage is inconvenient. I mean, you know, good, it's well and good if you and your, your husband or your, your partner, your spouse, if you're compatible and everything is uh, smooth flowing every single day. But but sometimes, you you, you know, as, as man, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Sometimes the friction, and the, this sharpens us, but sometimes no one wants the friction. No one wants the friction. And, uh, but this is really for character. God is more concerned about our character than our comfort. So work on your character. Improve, on, uh, improve your personality. Improve and try to learn, and it, you have to continue doing that. Um, I, I believe that many husbands and wives are kids in adult body bodies. You, um, they they grow old, they grow old, but they never really mature. <laughs> and and we need to work on our character because that's how that's one way of us fighting for our marriage. And uh, know where to know where to get or uh, expect your happiness from because your happiness cannot come from your spouse james in the bible says that why do we have conflicts is because we're trying to squeeze from the other person something that only god can provide in our marriages your spouse 
can only give you 30% of what you really need. 70% will still come from God. In fact, 100%. But, you, you know, you get my point. You, you cannot get everything from your spouse. And if you think that way, you'll be disappointed. So work on your character. Work on your character. Uh, improve. Uh, um, study. And read up. And, uh, you know, don't. Don't, don't don't think that your spouse can uh, can can answer all the uh, the questions in your life. You know that's idolatry. <laughs> that's idolatry. You're putting your spouse before God when we should put God first. Again, the name of Jesus. Unto the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess that He is Lord. Number two, work on your communication. I think marriage problems are communication problems. Okay? That's the number one reason for divorce, lack of communication. I've seen couples deciding to separate, deciding to, to start living uh, apart from each other. And while they're discovering that, while they're talking about that, they, just, they continue to discover things that they did not know about their spouses. Uh, in, 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 a, in an argument, they say, they let, like, let's say they're, they're discussing how to separate, the who gets what, and then they say, huh, I did not know that. You did not tell me. So it's lack of communication. Sometimes we are together, and, and I pray that it doesn't, it's not happening in your families now that we are together 24-7, 24, 24 hours a day. We're together with your families and you're not talking. What are you doing? Gadgets, 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 gadgets. My son, Ziki, um, wrote in a piece of paper that uh, one of the rules, some rules for, the, for our household, and he said, no gadgets while eating. No gadgets while eating. And guess what? I sometimes violate that rule. <laughs> I do. I do. And Ziki reminds me often, dad, dad, dad. And, uh, you know, when you're together, talk. Okay? Talk. Talk. Lack of communication. Have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Okay? Have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Even if we're together... Take some time for you and your spouse to talk, you and your kids to talk. Have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. Improve and work on your communication and learn how to communicate well. Learn how to communicate well. My wife and I, we made a decision. We made, a, 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 we made an agreement that as long as I want to be heard, she is bound to listen. And as long as she wants to be heard, she, I am I'm bound to listen to her. Um, yeah, because we need to communicate. We need to learn how to communicate well. I'll give you an example. When you're talking, when you're arguing, you say, yeah, 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 yeah. What are you really saying? So the body says lots of things without you even saying a word. When you say, yeah. Huh? That, that mere action, it says, it, for, you know, it, it says, okay, just stay there. I don't want you in my life. Make sense? Stop it. Stay there. I don't want you in my life. See? What you're saying is talk to the hand. <laughs> talk to the hand. So learn how to communicate well. Look at each other in the eye. It's hard to talk to someone who is not really looking at you. That's why when I talk to my son, I always tell him, Ziki, look at me. Hey, 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 hey. Look, 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 look at me. Learn how to communicate well. And then number three, work on your commitment. Work on your commitment. Okay. Um, there's this term that I can I, I want to uh, tell you and share with you, and it's called it's 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 a uh, it's a problem of many many couples, many many families. It's called relationship drift. Relationship drift. It's drifting away from each other. It doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't happen overnight. You don't wake up one day and you realize, ah, oh, we're, we're, we're too far away from each other. It happens slowly. 
It happens when you're not talking. It happens when you start to take each other for granted. It happens. Um, it happens when you uh, uh, when when you lose the intimacy, and uh, the intimacy goes when when you're not talking. So it's a relationship drift. Slowly, slowly. It, again, it doesn't happen overnight. It happens very slowly, and then one day you realize that you're no longer in love. And then you say those words. I don't love you anymore. I don't love you anymore. And then you say, it's not you, it's me. It's relationship. It's, it's a relationship drift. And I, can I tell you that it is all very natural that we drift apart because of the many things that we're doing. Because we need to, 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 to make money for the family. We need to look for money so that we can feed our family. We need to look for tuition money. And we need to work. We need to do a lot of things. The wives, they need to clean. If they're a housewife, they need to fix house, keep house. Um, um, so so it's natural because of the many things, many distractions. And the natural uh, tension is, to, is, is, is really pulling us apart from each other. It's natural that you drift apart. So what is the solution to that? You have to commit to bond constantly. To put it simple, simply paddle. Don't let the current pull you away from each other. Use your God-given paddle and paddle so that you continue to stay, keep close to each other. Commit to bond constantly. Are you having weekly dates? Are you having weekly conversations? Are you having daily conversations? I remember... I remember uh, growing up, you know, I, I used to sleep in my grandparents' room. And uh, I, I remember sometimes I wake up at around 3 and I hear them talking. And that's their time for talking to each other, 3 a.m. And uh, they talk to each other. They discuss life. And uh, I, I, I love listening to them because that's when their, their guards are down. That's when they're vulnerable. That's when they discuss their problems. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've always looked at that and I've always wondered, wow, my grandparents are doing that. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? I find myself talking to my wife sometimes at 3 a.m. in the dark. In the dark. And uh, we talk about life. We talk, we talk about Ziki. We talk about our son. And one day, Ziki said, I woke up and I heard you talking. Huh? Huh? So does that mean that we're old? No. That means we're doing something right. <laughs> Continuing to talk. All right? I want to end by answering two, two questions, okay? Um, wow. Um, I, think, I think we'll extend up to 10 o'clock tonight, okay? Two questions. Um, what, if, what if you can't repair the marriage anymore? What if you can't repair the marriage anymore? Um, here. When we counsel people, when we talk to people and couples who have problems, we say that there are three things, okay, for you to consider so that it, it, you consider these three things. If, if any of these three things are, are present in your relationship, I think be open. You should be open to, to temporarily, in the beginning maybe, temporarily protect yourself, move away if there's abuse. If there's addiction, if there's adultery, again, if there's abuse, addiction, and adultery, we need to you need to protect yourself. Okay, so so um, in the beginning, just be ready. Okay, I've seen marriages get healed when one person moves away for a while, and then they talk, they continue to talk, they become friends, and then they fall in love. Or they fall in love all over again, and that's good. But I, I've also seen some couples. When they temporarily separate, um, it, they, they don't go back together again because of the three things. They need to, you need to protect yourself. And uh, here's my message. God can still bless you even if you're in that situation. Question number two. Um, what if my marriage has already failed? I believe that God is a restorer of lost time. And I believe that God is bigger than your mess. That if you're in a mess right now, God can use that and give you a message. Um, yes. Did, did you hear that? 
God is bigger than your mess. You may have marriage problems, but I'm telling you, if you're going to seek the Lord while he may be found, if you're going to consciously follow Jesus, I'll give you a promise in Acts. It says that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in you and all your household. You and all your household. God is bigger than your guests. I want to speak to the, the solo parents out there. Maybe, you know, listening to me, you say, oh no, there's no way, but I don't have a husband, I don't have a wife, even have a boyfriend, and uh, you, you have kids, your solo parents. Two things, two things I want you to remember. Number one, your kids will heal. They will be, or they may be affected by what happened to you, but the good news is, your kids will heal but for your kids to heal the kids need to see how God has healed you as well is God will use your scars God will use their scars and again in order for your kids to heal you need to get healed yourself believe that God is Jehovah Rapha God our healer just be one step ahead in this healing. Show your kids that you're healing. Show your kids that you're praying. Show your kids and they will heal. And the bad effects of a broken family, okay, will be put to good. Romans 8, 28, God will work things unto good for those who love you, okay? Believe that even in a separation, God will bring good out of evil. Even in the worst situation, God can make it and turn it to the best. Number two, your kids will believe. Your kids will heal. Number two, your kids will believe. Your kids will believe what you tell them about their future. You just have to constantly remind them about their future. I'm, I'm going to give you four examples. Four people who came from broken families. And maybe they, they have every reason for them to not to live a life you know the life that they're living now or maybe they they have a reason to rebel to be rebels but but i'm, I'm talking about feast builders angel Nico, john ben rodriguez adrian Pagliban, alvin barcelona came from broken families but god used their scars and now they're healing now you're serving god god did it for them it happened to them it can happen to you as well God loves your family, brothers and sisters. God loves your family. The antidote to the virus of sin is the love of God. Can I ask you to pray? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father, we come before you tonight, and I just up to you, my brothers and sisters, who are wounded right now, who have family problems, who uh, are experiencing a lot of pain. Father, I pray that you do not waste the pain that they're going through. That you will give them the grace, O Lord God, that when they feel that they are not enough, you will remind them that your grace is sufficient for us. For it is when we are weakest, that is when your power reaches perfection. I pray, O Lord God, that you turn our situation, bad situation, into good. And we just believe, O Lord God, that the best is yet to come. We receive your love. We receive your hope. We receive your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to worship the Lord, and then I'll come back later. I want to invite you now to just be in his presence. Because, you know, in every trial and in every victory, we find God right in the middle of it, right here with us. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I'll never be alone. The 
was another in the fire Standing next to me There was another in the waters Holding back the seas And should I ever need reminding Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me there is another in the fire Oh, oh, oh. oh my dead life dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I will bow to the things of this world. I know, I know, I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in the water. Holding back the seas, and should I ever need reminding, what power sets me free? There is a great light holds nobody. Now the power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. And we'll be through it all. So come on, man, in the space between all the things I see and this reckoning. And I don't know, I will never be alone. I know. And I know, I will never be alone. There'll be another in the fire. Standing next to me, there'll be another in the waters, holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding? How could you think to me? I count the joy from every battle. Yes, I know that's what you'll be. I can see the light in the darkness as the darkness bows to the end. I can hear the roar in the heavens as the space between west and I can feel the ground shaking beneath us as the prison walls cave in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between There'll be another in the fire Standing next to me There'll be another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need a reminder How good you've been to me I count the joy from every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be 
Thank you, Isa. Thank you very much. Thank you, brothers and sisters. I just continue to pray for you, and I pray that you will, in a very special way, understand and receive God's love for you and for your family. Okay? I have some very important announcements for you. Today, um, um, we, uh, if, if you see, if you're on the Facebook page of Aura, um, we are, are going to get ready to receive your offering. And uh, you, if you, you can see it there. Um, you can see there, um, there's an electronic or a digital love offering envelope. Ah, a digital love offering envelope. You can click that and then it will have all the information for, uh, of course, your information that you will put in and then how you want to give and the different ways that you can give. Okay? So um, it can be through bank. Uh, it, it can be through bank transfer, it can be through GCash, it can be through a check deposit. Um, yeah, we're going to show you that also. So if you look at, look around the Facebook page and uh, because we're, we're not seeing each other, we are getting ready for online giving. Okay. So um, you can deposit or fund transfer and you can do checks. Our account number, our account name is Light of Jesus Family, Mega Manila, Makati, and Taguig District Incorporated. And this is the account number. Okay. There's a digital envelope by visiting, okay, My Feast Offering one MyFeastOffering1.com. Okay. MyFeastOffering1.com. And uh, it will help you. It, it will make your giving easier and it will help us also track um whatever is being given or whatever is being offered and in that uh, love offering envelopes you can also write your prayers your your praise reports and it's going to be cool all right so uh, there and uh, the other announcement is starting next week um at, you, you see the logo you see this logo you see this logo there there feast at home okay starting next week Starting tomorrow, actually, um, we will be uh, we will be doing uh, unified feasts in the district. We will have a weekend feast and a weeknight feast. Weekend feast will be feast Aura and uh, Glorieta and Shangri La Plaza working together. And we, of course, we have six fifteen. Okay, so now every feast will be seen in the Facebook pages of the three feasts. So 6.15 next, um, tomorrow, 10.30, if you have friends and dito na kayo nasanay, you can tune in, go to SM Aura page, and you get to watch the Feast Makati District Weekend Feast. And you will see this in the Glorieta page, in the uh, Shangri-La Plaza page, and uh, we'll see about the district page. Okay? So tomorrow, 10.30 a.m., and then we will have... Uh, another session at 5 p.m., okay? And then Saturday, next Saturday, 6.15, and uh, it's going to be cool. And then weeknight feasts, we have a Feast Makati District weeknight feast, Tuesdays and Thursdays. Of course, you will uh, you get to uh, see and listen to Brother To Relova and Jan Silan. Um, for the weekend, it will be me, uh, Eb Magtuba, Builder Eb Magtuba, and Risa Singson Kaupeng. All right, so take note of that. Starting tomorrow, unified feasts under the Feast Makati District. And on Monday, we're going to have a hunger club Bible study to be led by Risa Singson Kaupeng. It happens every Monday. Just go to the Feast Makati District page and uh, go to uh, Miss Risa Singson Kaupeng page. Okay, and Aura page also. We will, we will flash this as well. All right, so... 
get ready for a stronger, more unified, uh, better Feast Mahadi district. Okay, so there. I'm excited about that. Okay, so I want to thank you for uh, for uh, joining me. Uh, join me again tomorrow if you can. And then every time we have a Feast Makati District feast. Okay, so God bless you all. I think um, we're okay. Uh, thank you to those who were part of Jewel's conference. Oh my goodness, it was so successful. And it was, uh, you know, it was Jesus' signature is written all over the conference. And uh, a lot of women have been blessed. Thousands of women have been blessed. So thank you very much. Continue to support us. Continue to partner with us to give. Continue to partner with us to reach out the to reach out to the unchurched. And God bless you all. I love you. Mama Mary loves you. I'm gonna see you soon. God bless. God bless. God bless. In the desert, in the darkness, God, you lead me through the night. In the summit, in the wonder, I am guided by your light. You go before my every way, I'm not afraid, so I will say your way. Oh my